Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us in this session uh, under the name of Simulation Games for Community Participation. We're so happy to uh, deliver this session. So today's session is going to be facilitated by me, Sabine and Zan. Uh, I'm part of Creativity Lab and a social entrepreneur and uh, co-delivered also by Mohamed Aisa, who is the founder and president of Creativity Lab for Empowerment and uh, Innovation. So first, we want to get to know each other and we want you to introduce yourself in the chat box. Please share your name and pronouns and location. Hi, good morning, people. Can you share your names, pronouns, location? You know, it's lovely to know you and where are you from? Okay, so we have Laret from South Africa. Okay, hello Laret, welcome. You know, I've been there before three years ago and I had to enjoy the sun of your country. But maybe, you know, people need to prepare themselves. You can uh, go to the next slide, but I need to clarify something that this workshop is based on uh, interaction because without your uh, interaction, we cannot, you know, achieve uh, the expected uh, outcomes that we planned uh, for. Go to the next slide, Sabine, and I'm sure okay. that in the next exercises we will have uh, okay, this, that's me. Uh, uh, before that we delve into our workshop, uh, let me introduce uh, the Creativity Lab. The Creativity Lab is a Palestinian uh, non-governmental organization that was established in 2022. Uh, the theory of change that uh, the Creativity Lab adopts is based on three main pillars. The first one is creativity. And we do believe in uh, at the Creativity Lab that each one of us is uh, creative and uh, the creativity could lead to something which is connected with entrepreneurship, which is innovation. And uh, innovation, it's the ability to test your ideas in a brave way, not to be hesitant. And when you are uh, innovative, uh, make sure that you are uh, able, you know, to establish entrepreneurial projects and interventions that serve your community and uh, support uh, the uh, changing process to the most uh, complex problems that you face. Uh, the simulation games, why the simulation games? Uh, first of all, the simulation games is an informal educational tool. We do believe at uh, Creativity Lab that this is a tool that could help the people to interact, uh, reflect, and live the real experience in an imaginary world. And this leads, you know, to uh, concrete results, results that could be disseminated and adopted by uh, our communities. Uh, I hope that you will uh, enjoy the simulation game that will take place uh, today. And uh, now, Sabine, oh, for the participation letter. The first step before that we implement any simulation uh, game uh, at the Creativity Lab is to play this game, which is the participation letter. The participation letter is something about the community participation and it consists of eight levels. And these are the eight levels. The first one is manipulation. The second one is therapy. The third one is informing. The uh, fourth one is consultation. And the fifth one is allocation and the sixth one is partnership and we have also at the top of the uh, ladder uh, two main uh, or two important uh, levels that uh, we call delegation and citizen control actually the uh, participation ladder is one of the main tools that uh, specialists trainers and uh, facilitators use when they conduct uh, some activities that are belonging to community participation and these levels are categorized. Uh, you can see here in the, uh, in the picture how they are categorized for the three uh, first uh, levels from the bottom, uh, manipulation, therapy, informing. It's something that we call, uh, it represent the non-participation issue. And for the consultation or the informing consultation and allocation, it, uh, they represent uh, a symbolic participation. And for the 
the last three levels, they uh, represent the real participation. What we are going to do together, I don't think that uh, we can do it in breakout rooms, but we can do it uh, here in the plenary, that uh, uh, we need to discuss uh, all of these levels to reflect uh, on them. We need to come up with definitions for each level, and we prepared uh, for you uh, some scenarios. And these scenarios uh, uh, must be matched with all of these levels. Okay, so I'm gonna share the scenarios. One minute. Okay. As I have mentioned, uh, you will see here different scenarios. They are mentioned there in a random way. And what you need is to reflect on these scenarios and try to uh, match them with the levels of uh, the participation ladder. I don't. I don't know if someone of you would like to try, you know, to read the first scenario and uh, think about the level that could uh, match it. Let me read the first scenario. The first scenario is, okay, we have here a volunteer. Okay, it's a bit tinny. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe you can share also Sabine the link with yes. uh, with them, and in this way they can, you know, see the scenarios in a good way. Okay. These scenarios prepared uh, based on uh, one of our experiences with a Palestinian uh, municipality in which that we were trying to uh, engage the local community and the decision makers uh, and uh, a community participation uh, event. And what they had to do is the same thing that we are uh, doing uh, here, that they got the scenarios and they had to have discussions about these scenarios and match them with the ladder of participation. I can go through all the scenarios. We have the scenario number one, the municipality organizes advisory desks in the city to ask citizens their signature on the proposal for a multi-service center which will house doctors from the health department, workers from the welfare department, and specialists from the employment service. Now, the idea behind the exercise is to discuss the scenario among the group. Actually, we don't have a lot of people here. And try to create a connection between the scenario and the levels of participation. And that's the same thing for the second scenario, the third scenario, the fourth one. Tell, uh, uh, we uh, tell that we go through all the scenarios. Usually when we deliver this workshop uh, virtually, you know, we send people to breakout rooms and they start to discuss the definitions of the levels of participation or the ladder of participation and they need to create, uh, to match them with the levels of, with the ladder and uh, its levels. Good morning. Sorry, it's Larry Schultz speaking from South Africa. I just want to say I'm very new to the participation ladder. Is there any chance you could just give us a quick overview again of that, please? You know, actually, the uh, participation ladder is a tool that uh, the community development uh, specialist came up with based on different studies and researches and, uh, let's say, interactive experiences with uh, their communities. And what they did exactly that they categorize, you know, the, 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 the participation processes. 
And they came up with uh, the, the ladder of participation in which that they started with manipulation. And here it's a reflection about how the decision makers, you know, manipulate the people. Uh, they keep telling the others that uh, our organizations are uh, fully uh, are fully participatory, but at the same, they are trying, you know, to show off. And what they are trying to do is to manipulate the people in the process. You know, they are trying to market this as, uh, issue to to promote that they are uh, participatory, but uh, in the reality they are not. For the therapy, uh, it means that you know the decision makers are trying, you know, to mimic the rules of uh, doctors and uh, health specialists that they are the only ones who know the solution and the people there are not able to uh, contribute to uh, the process for informing uh, it means that the decision makers you know uh, tackle the issue and uh, find the solutions and later on they inform the people for the consultation it's about you know having some meetings, some events in order to consult with the local community without having an intention to make sure that those people are fully involved. The palliation, it's uh, something about, you know, that, okay, I'm, uh, you know, it, it looks like the uh, rule of fathers and mothers, you know, that sometimes our parents are trying to show the others that they are trying to involve their uh, kids uh, within any process, but at the end of the day, they are the only deciders on the process. They are the only ones who can say yes or not. The partnership, this is something which is, which is one of the most advanced of uh, participation. It means that uh, people are there and they do their best in order to participate and the decision makers uh, provide them with uh, some rooms, some spaces uh, in order to uh, reflect their ideas and uh, raise their voices. Uh, and the delegation, uh, it means that uh, the decision makers are asking the people to assume the rules and uh, take over the process. And the citizen control, it means that the process is fully controlled by the citizens. They are the ones who uh, manage the process and came and come up with uh, the solutions. And uh, the uh, citizen control is the most important level of uh, the ladder of participation. And it reflects how the uh, society is connected and uh, all of its uh, segments are involved in any uh, community participation process. And here we do consider the decision makers as citizens. It means that the citizens are citizens and the decision makers also are citizens. They work together. Uh, within uh, according to a process and they uh, make sure that uh, this process is fully controlled by all the segments of uh, their society. Uh, Lorette, is it clear now? Thank you. Yeah, so now we're looking at the first scenario to take our best guess where it fits. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The participation ladder could be also uh, adapted for any context uh, that you serve within. I mean, if we are talking about youth participation, women participation in, in the political life, uh, the let's say the, the most marginalized uh, segments or uh, categories of our societies, but it's a lovely exercise that could be used in, uh, within in different contexts. And I'm sure that later on, you are going to get all of these materials from the ABCD uh, conference uh, management. I've got some time. I'm joined by two, three colleagues actually with mine. Are we <laughs> <guessing>? <laughs> um, and I'm, if, sorry, if no one else participating, we're going to say we, we're guessing that's 
probably informing or consultation. It's not really consultation, so more informing then. You are talking about which scenario? Sorry, the first one. What do you think for the first one? Yes, so we're thinking because it's just a desk asking for a signature on a proposal, that's not really particip participation. Um, it's just mm -hmm. kind of informing and getting an approval on the informing. It could be an, uh, informing and also you need to think about manipulation. At the end of the day, there is no wrong answers. You know, because it depends on the context that, let's say, on on the place that you live in. You know, this scenario uh, could be uh, something regular in, in my country, but it could not uh, in your country. But at the end of the day, we need to take into our consideration the environment, the people, and the uh, democratic structures and regimes that we have in our countries, and how the decision-making process uh, takes place uh, in our countries. But according to our context, you know, we do consider the scenario, uh, the case scenario number one, uh, as manipulation. I think we will agree with you. It took from us a long time in order to uh, come up with these scenarios, and we had to deliver uh, so many workshops with the local community in the presence of decision makers, especially in the local governance uh, institutes. And we had to create this connection between the ladder of participation. Actually, the ladder of, of participation is not just a game. It's, you know, something that is based on researching and your knowledge about your community and how you are involved uh, with all uh, the issues that happen there. Okay, so let's move to the scenario two, to the second scenario. Uh, the municipality organizes a meeting with social workers, psychologists, health specialists for a socially disadvantaged city district with a high rate of crimes, which is in the periphery with poor access to public services and production sites. The focus of the event lies on the strategies to cure uh, problematic behaviors of the city district citizens. So what do you think? My first guest is therapy. I think the um, cure, you said mm. the word cure, <laughs> identifies yes. that. You, you are totally right. That's therapy. Sabine, can we move to scenario number three or maybe I can read it. The municipality okay. uh, organizes meeting with social workers, psychologists, health specialists. No, 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 I'm, I'm reading scenario number two. The municipality creates a website and establishes open houses to inform and detail citizens about the construction of a new playground. Citizens can write posts on the website or send letters to the open house to describe their preferences on the way the playground should be built. What do you think? Well, I'm going to hazard a guess because now if we move up from the bottom, we did manipulation, then therapy, and now we would be on informing um, because they it's not consultation. They've created a website which, yes, you can post some questions or put your stuff there, but it's not really consultation requires a, a dialogue. Um, and this is really just saying you can put some comments on because we're we're building a playground and you can just maybe give us some comment on how you think that should go. But there isn't consultation about whether they even want a playground or not. So I would say informing. 
Thank you very much, Pei. Now we can uh, move to uh, case scenario number four. The city needs new public services for young mothers, youth as unemployed and hospital patients. The municipalities or the municipality carries out surveys, questionnaires, and public hearings with citizens of all ages for this purpose. A final meeting with the citizens is organized and the mayor presents the construction plans of a day nursery, a youth center, an employment center, and a health clinic. Citizens can vote yes or no on their construction. Come on, people, we have a lot of things to do together. So again, we're moving up the ladder where now at least they ask them what they want and um, allow them to put ideas on the table and then vote. So it's, it's closer to consultation. It's not what I would consider good consultation, but it is at least um, allowing people from the start to, to say what they want. Totally right. What I like about what uh, about your comment, it's not good consultation, which means also that we have this possibility even to categorize, you know, these uh, levels into sub uh, categories. It's not a good consultation, but I do agree with you. Sabine. Okay, so the fifth one, uh, the municipality drafts a new social program and assigns this task to a special commission made up by municipalities members, which are the majority and randomly selected citizens from every city districts, which are the minority. What do you think? So, um, okay, uh, it's Salashni. Uh, we were thinking uh, application because they've just selected random members. It's not members that are in a position of uh, authority or role model sort of thing. And um, it's a minority, not a majority. So they don't, if there's a vote, they don't have actual voting power, but they're there and they're present. So we've satisfied you because you're on the council. You are totally right, because uh, placation is the act of soothing or appeasing. And, you know, this is something that you can find that everywhere in the world. Thank you very much. Okay, so the sixth one, the municipality and citizens reach an agreement and establish a special commission in order to draft the plan for construction of a new city district. In this commission, both municipality and citizens are represented with the same number of members. The construction plans draft will be then implemented by the municipality. What do you think? Okay, so we'll just say partnership. Okay, why? Because they reach an agreement. So this, the municipalities and citizens reach an agreement to establish a commission. So there is right from the start, they are looking at working together to figure out what to do. And then they allow for equal power within the, the commission. And it's still um, skewed towards the municipality because it's the municipality will then construct and implement it. But it does seem that they take it a bit more seriously and say, okay, well, this is for the district and it needs to be decided with the district and put all the 
cards on the table from the start and the citizens need to decide what it is that they want. Mm -hmm. We agree okay. it's because they're equal numbers and they, they both agree, but it's not quite delegation as yet because the municipality still implements and not someone else. Okay. okay. Mohammed, do you have any comments? No, thank you very much. You know, I'm going okay. to read the case scenario number okay. seven. The municipality wants to enhance the volunteering among the population. Municipalities members and citizens are equally represented in a special commission to draft a new strategy for this purpose. In the frame of the strategy, elected citizens from every city district receive the budget to implement the foreseen activities. What do you think? Sorry, just for, for the sake of moving forward, we're saying it's delegation because then they receive the budget to implement that being elected citizens. Thank you very much, Larit. Any comment, any other comments? I think the volunteering is quite an interesting thing. So they are, um, that, that becomes a, a big shift if you're getting people to volunteer and then implement. Thank you very much. I'm going to read the last key scenario, the citizens lobby, and finally reach an agreement with the municipality to set up an experimental city district social corporation for two months. Citizens dispose over the social policy budget for that period and are in charge with planning and managing social activities in the city district. It's very clear that it's uh, citizen uh, controlled, but you know, I would love to uh, get your comments and thoughts. It is not something I ever see in our municipalities do. They like to retain control over the budget at all costs. And I think this is a very, uh, it's not something that we're even familiar with at all in South Africa and would be lovely to work towards where citizens actually get to be in charge of budgets and, and that in the best way suited for them. But I think as a country, we are very far from that. We have the same situation here in Palestine and Lebanon, and we hope that we also have this uh, reality in the future. Thank you very much for your participation, okay. and maybe now we can move to the next part of uh, our workshop. Really, it was interesting to hear of your thoughts and ideas. Okay, one minute, and we're back. So in the next part of this session, um, we will be telling you the story of an island uh, called Sun. It's an imaginary island, it's not real, but uh, let's move to it. So. The island sun has different municipalities, and one of its municipalities is called Light. And in this municipality of Light, uh, it has an incident of contamination of water resources that has led to protests. Uh, municipal elections have resulted in a new government, and a new mayor invited citizens to a discussion about key challenges of Light, of the municipality of Light. And they found that in light challenges, there are many challenges, but the main ones were unemployment rates in the municipality that have reached 20. Sabine, are you Here, where women face more barriers finding jobs, in addition, they receive less average daily wage than men. 
So uh, after we, Fabien, Fabien, yeah, I think yes. that the people missed the uh, last slide. You know, the one which is before uh, this, when you were talking about the challenges of uh, light. Can you repeat them, please? Okay. So gender equality. No, before the slide. Oh, employment okay. So. And Okay, so as I was saying that uh, they found that in light's challenges, there was many challenges and the main ones were unemployment, where unemployment rates in the municipality had reached 25% in the past decade and waste management systems were ineffective. And the last challenge is gender equality, where women face more barriers finding jobs. In addition, they receive less average daily wage than men. So is it clear now, the challenges for everyone? We have uh, a country or an island which is called Sun. This country or this island has many municipalities. One of them is light. Actually, uh, there is a new elected uh, mayor who would like to build bridges with the local community in order to face three main challenges, as Sabine mentioned, gender equality waste management and unemployment. Now Sabine will clarify to you what we are going to do together in the next or the last part of our workshop. Okay, so thank you, Muhammad. Um, on the same whiteboard that we shared the link with you earlier, there is another section called Municipality of Light where we will be choosing a challenge, unemployment, waste management, gender equality, and nominate one of the group's members uh, for the position of mayor. And in this section, we need to uh, not use our real name, we use another names, and the other numbers in the group should be renamed as well, all of us should be renamed. And it is important that all of us work together to find innovative solutions to the selected challenge. So what do you think? What do you want? Unemployment, waste management, or gender inequality? You know, the game is designed in order to be implemented with uh, so many people. We don't have uh, here uh, so many participants. This is why that, you know, the floor is yours. Maybe you can select a challenge, assign one of you as a mayor and start, you know, discussing this challenge and come up with uh, an innovative solutions or many solutions. It's up to you. Who is, uh, who, I don't know if there is a volunteer to uh, be uh, the mayor and the other uh, participants. I'm definitely not offering to be mayor, but I just, I know that from our side, waste management is a real challenge. And we've done lots of brainstorming to figure things out and haven't um, come up with anything that's a very good solution as yet. So it would be interesting to see how we could play a, game that helps us think in a different way. So you think that waste management is the main one you know, to focus on? Well, it's most suitable for, well, for those of us who from tech, it's a very much part of what we do. We have to deal with waste management issues all the time in the municipality and the communities we work with. Okay. Let's say that the waste management is our main challenge. We need a mayor and we need people to share their ideas regarding the, you know, first of all, you know, we need to take into consideration when we deliver this kind of activities that we need to take the, pe the people away from their realities. You know, you're not, you need to rename yourself uh, with another name. You need, you know, to play a role that sometimes is not connected with your life and you need to be very careful sometimes, you know, when you are playing this role because there is one funny line, you know, between your reality and the role that uh, you play uh, in any uh, imaginary uh, simulation game. So if someone of you would like to play the role of mayor and others could contribute with their ideas or have a discussion, it could be, you know, like a role play actually, the game is not done uh, in this way, I mean, in the physical uh, or even the virtual space, but the number of participants, you know, uh, 
is not big fat. It's a good opportunity in order to have a general discussion here in the plenary. Who is the mayor? Okay, if no one else is volunteering, we will be, a, uh, will be the mayor. <laughs> Thank you very okay. much, Doris. I'm going to participate in this game. You know, I'm a chemical engineer who graduated from the United States and I just came back to uh, Sun. And I discovered a lot of problems in, uh, you know, in terms of the waste management collective systems and even the behaviors of the people and the municipality of light. And I would love really to uh, discuss this issue with you, the mayor and the other uh, people who are going to join us in this game. My name is Mustafa. Okay. So now we have Mustafa. Loret, what name would you like to rename yourself with? What should we be? <laughs> um, oh, I don't know any mayor sounding name. <laughs> Larry, it's simply so few of us. I think maybe you guys can't be a joint mayor. Maybe split up, up if there are three or four of you there, then one of you can be mayor and someone else can be something. Otherwise we're something gonna have luck. Well. Yeah. Okay. So we, we would like our mayor to be called Caesar, please. You have to choose a false name. Make up the name. Bob. Bob. Okay. Okay. We need other volunteers in order to start. You know, playing the game. I I will be um, Zoe, an unemployed young lady. Okay. And what you are doing uh, in your life, Zoe? So I live I live in the area and um. I'm probably contributing to part of the problem. I don't really think out of my box with solutions, but um, I'm there. Solid waste is a big issue. And um, maybe I have a connection to the mayor in some way. So I get dragged into, I get pulled into the, the story. Okay, thank you very much, Zoe. Do we okay. have other volunteers who would like to play with us? Okay, so I will be, uh, Sara, a makeup artist <laughs> living in Sun. You know, it's very clear from the mechanism of the game that we have different profiles, people who are doing different things, people uh, who are coming from different uh, backgrounds and they have different perspectives. And this is very important to the success of the game because in this way, we can make sure that all the categories are there or you know, at least the representatives of different categories are, are there. Now, the, the, I don't know if uh, someone else would like to join us. Yeah, if I could be a business owner, please. Sorry, I know we said, just to reconfirm, we've got four people on my connection here. So um, one of our, my colleagues says, where he's the mayor. Um, if I could be a business owner um, with an interest within our community. Perfect. And my name will be um, Margaret. <laughs> okay. Margaret, okay. But usually when we, uh, you know, when we are doing this, we use two different uh, tools. The first one is Consul, which is a platform. It's a digital platform and, you know, which is used here in, in Palestine. I don't know. It's uh, it's not, uh, maybe it doesn't work in, in Lebanon. And this platform, you know, it's a tool in order to involve more participants in, in the game because people can uh, join this platform and they can uh, share their ideas and thoughts. Uh, and one of the main, uh, let's say, frameworks or, or approaches that uh, is used as, you know, the problem stream, we can use also different uh, tools. 
the first issue is to identify the problem. You know, now we have the mayor and we have representatives of the local community and we need to come up with a statement for the problem that we are trying to address. You know, when we are talking about waste management, this is something which is uh, big and uh, it's very general, but we need to uh, identify what is the problem. And here, as we are coming from different countries and from different contexts, we need to agree on one problem that we need to address. We need to discuss, you know, uh, its causes and uh, the root, uh, the root, uh, the roots of this problem and what are uh, its consequences. And later on, we need to start on brainstorming. And here in the brainstorming, I think Sabine could help us uh, in this regard because she is a, a specialist in brainstorming tools. But the mayor, uh, if you can share with us, uh, you know, some problems that the municipality of uh, light uh, faces in terms of waste management. And we need to start the discussion about these problems and identify one problem that uh, could be uh, more analyzed. And uh, later on, we can move to the uh, solution stage. Um, hello, um, I've got limited budget, and lack of resources, human resources. Um, uh, infrastructure is breaking down. Um, um, yeah. Just had a strike. I just had a strike, yeah. Yes. Um, Dealing with unions. Unions, people are quite unhappy in the municipality. Uh, lack of service delivery. Uh, so how can we help? You're good at this. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is your identification as the mayor of uh, the 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 city. Now we need to uh, get the thoughts of the other people. I mean the uh, the representatives of the local community. We can start with Zoe if she has something about what has been said by the mayor and what is, let's say, her uh, perspective in terms of uh, the the main challenges that uh, identified the municipality. I think we, I, I live in a, a place that has got piles of rubbish that has not collected. The municipality hasn't come for a while. Or when they do come, they don't come when they say they'll come. So then the dogs get into all the solid waste. And, and what am I supposed to do? I don't have a job. I don't have a car. Um, and, I'm, uh, and then people are living in an unhealthy environment. And I'm tired of the excuses from the mayor because they really do need to come and just help us clear the, the area because it's now got to a point where we can't do anything ourselves. We actually need machinery to come in and clear and it's become an unhealthy place to live. Thank you very much, Zoe. What about Sarah, the makeup artist? Okay, so I think when using makeup, uh, I, there's, I, mean, I can't find trash, I recycle trash, so the makeup products or materials that I'm done with are gone through trash, a normal trash, a traditional trash, not a recycling trash. And I think this is annoying and this can lead to waste management, which is our problem. So there's a lack of recycling trashes or special trashes for recycling. Okay, thank you very much, Sarah. Mustafa, from the perspective of Mustafa, I think the problem is not was my not what was mentioned by the mayor. I think that there is a gap, a communication gap between the local community and the decision makers. It's not a matter of infrastructure, it's a matter of behaviors and awareness. We need to work on the people to raise their awareness, to uh, integrate you know, uh, different uh, subjects and approaches that are related to environment within the educational system. and. This in this way we can come up with a solution to the uh, wastes that we have in our municipality at the long run. What I, I'm trying to communicate as a chemical engineer that 
we have two main uh, options to work on the uh, short uh, run, and this will not lead to anything. And this is very clear in what uh, has been mentioned and <laughs> the problems that the Meyer uh, shared. And for me, the long run is more important to come up with a strategy to strengthen the communication process between the local community and the decision makers, focusing on uh, waste management uh, approaches and systems. We still have the business owner, Margaret. So as a business owner, I've had a few initiatives that I've tried um, in terms of recycling for my own business and also for the community that surrounds my business. But it's such a hassle for carting everything that's being recycled away and sorting out. Um, I struggle with my own employees to recycle community, uh, the recycling bins that I've put in front of my business. Um, worked for a little while, but I find there's more waste on the on the, outside the bins and around in the area than there is in the bins. Um, so I tend to agree with the, the civil engineer that uh, we need to work more closely with people in terms of what recycling is. But then also we need help still. I also think the municipality has an issue. I still think the mayor has a, a, a real problem because um, if these bins are not regularly collected and cleared out and we know that it's really going to the recycling centers as it should, it's all just going to the landfill. So for me, it's a combined problem. I really do think community, government, as well as including myself, we need to find a, a better solution for how to deal with using less and then what do we do with it after we've used it? And how do we solve all of these issues in terms of funding also? Thank you very much, Margaret. Actually, in the reality, this is what we do. First of all, we come up with uh, different proposals. I mean, you know, as a part of the simulation game. And uh, people start, you know, to make an analysis for the main problem, which is waste management. They uh, need to come with ideas. They need, you know, to scan their, uh, their community. And uh, also think and reflect on the most affected uh, categories by this problem, uh, if they are affected positively or negatively. And now we reach a moment in which that we need to make a decision. We need to vote for one of the ideas that being suggested by all of us as players. What do you think that will be our main problem that we need now to work on and come up with a solution that could help uh, in solving it? We had different uh, ideas, different perspectives. You know, the mayor uh, was uh, talking about uh, the infrastructure, about uh, the financial limitations. Uh, I Myself, I was talking about uh, the communication gap between the local community and the decision makers and the need of uh, working on, uh, let's say, uh, a proposal that changed the behaviors of people and then this way we can achieve uh, our goal uh, at the long run. Uh, the makeup artist uh, was talking about uh, a recycling approach. Uh, she started from what she is doing, uh, especially in her business. And also for the unemployed uh, young lady, you know, she was talking about how she is affected by the problem and what are the circumstances that uh, make, uh, make, uh, make her, makes her life uh, difficult. What do you think? What could be the main problem that we need to address as a part of uh, our discussion? And correct me if I drop uh, something here or there. Sorry, um, Mohamed, or should I say Mustafa, if I can just ask, um, not 100% clear what we're doing right now. Are we finding a solution or are we voting for a solution? I thought previously we were just kind of giving a problem statement. So yes. what, we are, we what's the step now? Yes, we, we are trying now, you know, to summarize uh, our discussions through uh, writing uh, a negative statement, one problem, based on uh, the inputs that uh, all of us uh, share. 
because we had different you know ideas regarding the problems of waste management uh, and the, uh, the municipality of light so now we need to agree on one problem that we need to address uh, through a solution what do you think one problem Maybe you could start with communication. That's up to you, you know. That's your decision. Mm -hmm. By the way, I need to clarify something. You know, this game all the time is played uh, with the presence of uh, two facilitators. The facilitators uh, must not be uh, contribute to the uh, progress of the game. They have to be there as uh, servers. Maybe, you know, the participants need, uh, you know, flip charts, uh, markers, uh, uh, some hands, uh, if they have uh, any question, you know, the facilitators could uh, answer them. But when you play, you know, uh, this game, you know, try to assign two facilitators who will be there in order to support the process, not to participate. In. Let's say Sorry, the community. Can I ask a question about uh, about the game? So, if you play this game with a group. Um, is it obviously then role playing? So even if you have representatives from the different stakeholders, you're still going to role play someone else. Actually, what is done in the reality, uh, Laurette, that we have a scenario, a full scenario, and sometimes the scenario is more than five or six pages. This scenario uh, is written by different specialists. You know, when we are talking about three challenges, these uh, challenges, we need to bring, you know, people who have uh, good experience in gender equality, uh, waste management, and uh, unemployment. These people uh, write the scenario in, uh, in such a way that could reflect all the opinions and perspectives of the local community. Later on, we need to pr prepare profiles. It means that we need to imagine, I mean, the group or the team who, who, write, uh, who writes the scenario need to come up with the different profiles. Uh, but, you know, time is limited here. This is why that we decided not to share with you the, the profiles and to ask you to uh, create your own profiles. I think I think part of the challenge here today is that most of us are from one organization, so we know each other really well, and we know our we have one kind of scenario, well, one kind of frame of reference. So it would be really helpful. In a normal situation, you'd have people from all different perspectives. We actually come from one one perspective, and so yeah, I think we're struggling a little bit here because we haven't got other people outside of that that are contributing to. You know, to give us different perspectives. You know, I cannot see uh, any problem in that. If you have, let's say, a problem that you are trying to address or tackle uh, through the services that are provided by your organization, please feel free uh, to share it. And don't forget that we have also other people who could contribute, who could play the game. And don't forget that you have also Sabine and Mohammed who are coming from uh, different countries that they are uh, also uh, different countries and different backgrounds. So we can start from one of the problems that you are trying to address and it will be a good opportunity. It, it's a good opportunity for you also to get our inputs as we are outside the box. So I just add one thing, uh, someone, said or mentioned uh, communication as a problem. So what do you mean by communication as a problem? I think what we were talking about earlier is that everyone gave their little perspective from their side, but um, it didn't seem, there was a disconnect between mm. what the feeling on the ground from the external, the, from the chemical engineer and from the mayor. So that we're all talking different stories and um, there isn't a common way to understand what the key issues are and therefore how to okay. move forward. So maybe we can relate it to lack of awareness in some way because uh, there's not enough awareness about the perspectives or the behaviors of people within their communities. So what do you think? 
um, they might have an awareness of the issues, but they might lack the will to do anything about it, or they might lack the resources to do anything about that awareness. So is it, for me, it really is about the will to communicate. By the end of the day, it's your choice. You can, you know, uh, identify any problem, even at uh, something that you are trying to address uh, through uh, the programs and the activities of your organization. You know, what we are trying to do is just uh, to reflect what uh, is done and the reality by the Creativity Lab. I would like to mention one of the examples or one of the programs that we keep doing with decision makers and citizens. We bring, you know, uh, representatives of the local communities, especially in terms of waste management and decision makers. And when they enter the training hall, they discover that they are a lot of trashes. You cannot imagine, you know, the trashes. If you go through uh, to our Facebook page, you will find a lot of pictures for uh, this uh, training. We call it the uh, Wirha. The Wirha in Arabic language means try to recycle it or recycle it. When they enter the room, you know, we tell them that we have a lot of trashes. And now your challenge, your mission is to get out this trashes, but not in a traditional way you need to provide us with a strategic framework based on activities that could be used later on or adopted by you. I mean, the decision makers with the support or the full support and involvement of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, citizens. And why we are doing this? Because we do believe that the problem all the time is based on the communication process that we have between the citizen and decision makers. Decision makers are all the time there they are uh, in their organizations. They don't care about the uh, voices of the citizens. And the citizens are angry, you know. They are not uh, active listeners in terms of their relationship with, uh, with, with, with the decision makers. And you cannot imagine, you know, the solutions that both of them uh, came up with. It's 12 o'clock. It's just an example about how we can enhance the communication process between citizens and decision makers. But at the end of the day, that's your decision. We need now to identify one problem and uh, to think about uh, a solution that could be adopted later on by, uh, by uh, decision makers and uh, citizens. Taking into consideration the ladder of participation. Um, could, 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 I, could, could we ask Mustafa for any um, ideas from other scenarios that he's seen in different cities that he could uh, put into the pot for brainstorming so that we could identify one key issue to move forward with from his experience? Actually, I do believe that the first step or the first corner of the development, or let's say bridging the gap, the communication gap between citizens and uh, decision makers is empowerment. We need to empower people, regardless that they are decision makers and uh, citizens. We need to improve their life skills. And this is a way in order to improve their psychosocial well-being. And when they improve their psychosocial well-being, they will be active citizens. They will be responsible citizens. Because, you know, it's not about if this country is rich or not. It's about that if you enjoy your life in this country or not. If you do feel yourself in this country or not. If you feel that your voice is heard or not. But if you start to bridge this uh, communication gap by or through empowerment, first of all, uh, you will facilitate, you know, you will provide people with different skills in order to... to uh, uh, to create uh, healthy relationships and later on this re these relationships will be reflected positively on development and uh, the future of uh, our countries and uh, cities, uh, the future of our countries. So if we're looking then for one problem, 
um, to take one problem within waste management, both both um, um, Sarah and Margaret both talked about the problem around recycling and wishing that there was something that they could do and that they wanted to get something going. So could we deal possibly with the issue of recycling and focus on that as one problem within that within the waste management issue that business owners and citizens could actually really get involved in. Can I add something, uh, uh, Zoe? Yes, please. We can start by upcycling. I mean that we can conduct, you know, uh, different trainings in order to help people to upcycle, you know, the uh, trashes and the wastes that they have. And this way, people will be sensitized to the importance of recycling. And these workshops could be conducted in the presence of decision makers, you know, citizens and decision makers will uh, receive the same training program and they will come up with uh, different uh, products. By the end of the day, maybe we can have a bazaar and this bazaar, you know, could be used in order to sell these products and people will come, will join us and it would, it could be, you know, it would be a good opportunity, a great opportunity to raise awareness and work on the negative behaviors of people through also uh, some sub activities. What do you think? What do you think, Zoe? And so, but do you think, do, uh, I don't have any money and I haven't got a job and how long is it gonna take before I can make some money from the upcycling? And, and I don't have any skills. Um, is someone gonna, when you talk about training, do you think there's someone who can give me training or I need some ideas, I'm feeling a bit hopeless. Perfect, Zoe. You know, we can add another component to our solution. Maybe also we can uh, recruit uh, some volunteers or people who are interested in uh, social entrepreneurship. And it could be later on, uh, maybe it could be, you know, uh, it could be very useful in terms of establishing social enterprises that are specialized in upcycling and recycling. And in this way, we can find a solution to the problem that you face, I mean, unemployment. Thanks, Zoe. What do you think? Maybe. Um, I think I need a sort of a partner in this, I think, to help um, work forward. And maybe maybe Sarah or Margaret, who are a bit more established and have at least tried something and have made something of their lives, can also partner with us to try and get a group of youth together to, to start something. You know, you are totally right, Zoe. Maybe we need Margaret because she is a business owner and she can invest some money in this regard. We can consider her as a business angel. And also Sarah uh, could help us in this regard. How, how can you help us in this regard, Sarah? Sarah, you are muted. Okay, so I think I can share my experience with Zoe. I can be a mentor for Zoe in her first phase of, uh, of cycling and business. Perfect. Who can sum up our solution? Can you do it, Margaret? We not sum up the solution, but um, as a business owner, I would like to be part of the solution um, and maybe offer um, my premises as a space where, where some of the training could um, happen. Um, so if we're going, to, if we just find, if um, Sarah has space to share that upcycling um, experience or recycling experience, as a business, unfortunately, we still, like I said previously, struggling ourselves. So I think we could benefit from how to recycle and who of the community can come fetch from their new skills learned, what they require from the space outside the office um, or outside the business rather. And maybe we can create a value exchange that um, they can get some of the recyclables um, I don't know, let's think about that. Is there a way that we create a value exchange in terms of what they bring or they want to utilize 
and what we can exchange. Okay. I would like Elvis, the mayor, to since he's been listening in on our conversation and maybe he's heard the, the issue from a different perspective, if he could maybe sum up the problem and the solution or the solution that we have come up with as a community. Yes, please. Was the mayor listening at all in our conversation? Or was he being a politician and not really listening to the people? The mayor was sometimes on the phone, so he wasn't fully in the room, but he has some idea. Um, as the mayor, um, I think we realize that there are quite a number of different issues, and I think our mandate is to look after the municipality as a whole, so we need to ensure that we improve things like infrastructure and service delivery, which is something we talk about a lot, but we governed by a higher power and most of the times. Um, the issues we have internally is that there are communication gaps um, within the government structures as they set up. So we need to talk about things like upside going and working out solutions on how to empower people a, a lot more than what we've done already. Um, but it's 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 part of the working process. I, as a, as an, a sitting mayor, am very keen to open these discussions um, and create these networks uh, while my time as mayor is still operational. So I'd like to really start getting into these conversations and developing these networks so that we can start seeing impact on the ground and hopefully start better allocating our budgets. Um, and time when the budgeting time arrives. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that we get the commitment of the mayor, which means the commitment of the municipality. You know, this is a great result and I'm very uh, optimistic that we are going to do a lot together. You know, we reach such a moment now that we need to end the, the game. Thank you very much for your participation. Please clap to yourself. And now uh, we move to the uh, harvesting time. And if you would like to raise uh, any question, we are here to answer them. Sabine now is going to share with you a link, a Jamboard link, in which that we need uh, some thoughts about, uh, you know, the workshop, uh, if you have uh, also ideas that could uh, make uh, you know, this kind of interventions much better in the future. So I sent the link in the chat box. It's a jam board. Please join us so we can hear your feedback and lessons learned. So are you wanting us to report back on something that we've learned in this session? Is that what the plan is? Yes, please. And after that, we uh, are done with the harvesting time. And you have uh, some questions, you know, it's our pleasure to answer them. I think I've put my little contribution there. I just think that I automatically try to solve the whole issue around waste management when that little role play made me realize that maybe, 
you just start with some small little project that is attainable and start there instead of trying to solve the whole waste management issue. Okay, so start with an attainable goal. Right? Yes. Okay. And we have another lessons, power of scenario building, nice. Planning and exploring problems and solutions from different perspectives of different parties involved. Very nice. Another one is start with a small solution. You don't have to solve the whole problem. Okay, it's close to this one. Nice. So anyone would like to add any lessons? Do you guys ever do this in um, in person as opposed to online? And how would it, you? Uh, yeah. We do it both, uh, Faye. We do it in person and we do it online. And actually, in online, in the virtual space, you know, we need more time. You know, one one hour and a half uh, is not enough at all. But actually, the idea behind the, the session is to introduce uh, the the tool and to be engaged yeah. with you and maybe to uh, develop partnerships, future partnerships, uh, in order to do the same thing in uh, different uh, regions and countries. Okay. Now we are working on uh, different scenarios. Actually, one is connected with the, uh, the, situ the political situation in Palestine. Our president is 86 years old, and it's not very clear who is going to uh, lead the situation if uh, he uh, passes away or he dies. Now we are trying, you know, to create a scenario uh, in which that, you know, uh, different specialists uh, uh, join us in order to come up with, uh, let's say, an imaginary uh, solution for the situation if it happens and how we can uh, deal with it. And the other uh, scenario that we work on is something that is connected with uh, gender-based violence, uh, particularly in the refugee uh, camps. And the lovely part of uh, the simulation games that also maybe this is, could be, uh, you know, uh, Sabine could clarify this uh, issue that the, that the Creativity Lab uses the simulation games as a part of what we are doing with the social uh, entrepreneurs. Because the idea behind the simulation games, you know, sometimes we create a connection between the human-centered design and the design thinking approach, because while we are implementing the game or playing the game, you know, uh, people uh, need to empathize with, uh, with the target groups. They need to identify problems, come up with uh, prototypes, and later on test these prototypes. Yeah, it's part of the design thinking process. Thank you very much for all of you. Actually, it was a pleasure to uh, work, with, uh, work with you. And if you have other questions, you know, we still have, uh, I'm not sure, Alison, we have uh, five minutes, something like that. And, uh, you know, uh, I just uh, share, uh, shared with you, you know, the, the Facebook page of the Creativity Lab. You will find there uh, all of our con contacts. If you would like, you know, to maybe, Sabine, if you would like also to, uh, to share with you, uh, with them, you know, your uh, email. Because Sabine, you know, actually is our uh, branch manager in Lebanon. You know, she is not able to uh, visit us here in Palestine because of the political situation, but she is doing amazing things there. So yeah, thank say, you for um, your participation. And uh, we're looking forward for any partnerships that is related to submission games or other. Yeah, someone was talking. Sorry, this is Allison. the... The, from the committee, I would just say that on the program, you had 
two full hours. So um, you don't need to um, rush to finish up. Okay. It's my mistake, you know, this, you know, I made this mistake. You know, my understanding was as one hour and a half, and this is why that we designed, you know, the session according to this time. I do apologize, but, you know, we can also uh, benefit uh, from this time in case that you have uh, questions regarding the simulation games and how you can employ it uh, and integrate it uh, with the problems that you are trying to address and uh, solve in your communities. Let me also clarify you something that, uh, you know, one of the uh, basic exercises that we use in simulation games or before the uh, implementation of the simulation games is community mapping. Uh, you know, also this is, could be done uh, on the virtual and uh, physical uh, uh, spaces. I don't think I've seen uh, from outside. Darpen, we have Darpen who would like to say something. Yeah, uh, hi, uh, Isa. I, I just wanted to ask you that what exactly uh, was your motivation to use games as sort of co-creation, and uh, what are some of the what are some of the uh, opportunities but as well some of the challenges which possibly people who are uh, or uh, you know people who have never used games simulation games uh, for uh, co for co-creation and problem solving which you feel uh, from your experience might be useful thank you very much darpin for this interesting question first of all let me clarify the uh, let's say the the theory behind of what we are doing uh, we do adopt at the creativity lab the experiential learning theory which is based on uh, different phases and steps you have your own experience as a human being you need to reflect on this experience and you need to conceptualize things i mean that now you are here and you would like to move to uh, another stage while you are moving to another stage, you know, you need to look around yourself, get learned lessons from, uh, you know, the past and conceptualize things. I mean, re-identify things in order to live a new experience. The lovely part of the theory that you can create a connection between this theory and the non-formal educational tools. People don't like to be unstructured anymore you know we are talking about digital transformation we are talking about you know a, a young uh, nation here in palestine and you know in the most uh, countries of the world and if you go to them uh, as an instructor or as someone who is going to teach them that this is what you have to do or not they will not get you in a positive way and they will not interact with you so we do believe uh, at, at, at the creativity lab that you know uh, non-formal educational tools could help the people to enjoy the experience and come up with a lot of learned lessons by the end. Driven from our own experience, we do feel that the people lack uh, open spaces. Uh, people are not uh, are marginalized. They are not able to raise their voices. And when you provide them with these spaces, and I do mean here safe spaces, they can you know uh, come up with a lot of ideas that could be integrated in uh, the issues that they are trying to address. The most important thing is to get the commitment of decision makers. I like so much our mayor when he was trying to communicate this, that the municipality is committed towards of what you are trying to solve and doing. And this commitment really uh, is very useful in terms of what could be happen in the future, especially when you are implementing your uh, solution, because the last part the last part of uh, the uh, learning experiential uh, theory is based on implementation. Without implementation, you cannot make sure that it's uh, it's a fail or uh, it's a failure or a success. Without implementation, you cannot you know feel yourself as a human being. 
we don't care so much at the creativity lab about you know uh, about the results we we care about the process and what the people gain from this process and we are not teaching people you know we we are trying you know to guide them we do call ourselves pedagogues and this is something which is connected with uh, a great uh, philosopher he is a french one he his name is winnicott and, uh, you know, he wrote a lot of things about uh, pedagogy and about the role of pedagogy. You know, you are not there or you are not here in order to tell people what they should do. You are here in order to guide people to different directions. And by the end of the process, you know, they are the ones who are responsible to select the best uh, choice uh, for them and the others. I don't know if I was uh, able to answer your uh, question or not. Yeah, I mean, I like, uh, I, you know, I also don't, uh, uh, even the structure of this asking question and then expecting a specific answer, you know, <laughs> I feel I, I, I like to even challenge that because it's, uh, maybe there is no arrival as much as much as, as you mentioned, just like that, there is, it's a process of exploration. And uh, uh, so, uh, so I'm also I'm also on the journey, just like you, the way you are sharing and explaining, uh, and I'm trying to just be with it, uh, with what you just mentioned, Isa. Uh, however, if I can do an addendum to the to, to the previous uh, question and your sharing, uh, uh, what are some of the structural barriers which simulation creates? Because in the sense, the reality and simulation, person has to. Um, at a conscious level has to uh, leave behind the portal of reality and feel that this whatever is happening is as real. Now this transition at a state of being when it happens is, is not very, uh, let's, let's avoid, use the word real because simulation to come to that term, to engage in that simulation, one has to also be pretty conscious of the fact that now this is real. I am I'm playing the game now. And, and this is like a, it's that state of uh, uh, that state in which the person enters. Now, in the world in which we live in, uh, uh, I, I, I feel if uh, to give an example, if you look, if I put on a, a 3D glasses uh, or a virtual glasses and I enter in a virtual reality like a metaverse, now, is that real? It's a, is, it, is it a reality of sorts, you know, in sense that I know it's a simulation, but I'm playing the game as if it's a reality. Now, now to create that without the VR headset, uh, what are some of the challenges or opportunities there for us to in, uh, tell people that to, to be in that state, uh, is there a preparation of sorts? to come enter that state uh, because a lot of time our rational mind will say, oh, this is not real, you know, it's a game and let's play it just like a game. So there's a separation of, of the real from where the person is entering into that simulation and to invite them. So what is it invitation that it is important that you take this simulation in the manner of it as a reality because whatever possible outcomes will come, can we then translate it into some sort of an action when we go back to reality? Uh, let me comment on what you just said. You know, actually in the uh, physical and even the virtual space, when we have uh, enough time, we have uh, colleagues who are drama therapists. They need to prepare the participants before that they delve in the uh, unreal world. I mean that, you know, they need to work with people through different exercises in order to make sure that they are transformed themselves in a safe way. The second thing, why we are doing simulation games? Because, you know, sometimes if we have a real discussion, it could lead to a conflict. And simulation games is, you know, a safe space that could help people to have a mature dialogue without conflicts and even that they have conflicts you know we need to remind us that you are playing but you are playing something which is very important for the local community you are not playing 
uh, only uh, to to have a pleasure. You are playing, you know, to 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 find a solution to one of the main challenges that your community face. It's very tricky. Uh, it's a way in order to uh, make people enjoy the experience. It's a lot of fun, but uh, it's also uh, something that uh, could. Uh, you know, could lead to some psychological problems if you are not doing this in a professional way and you don't have uh, a support team who has who has a good experience in, in therapy and uh, psychology. Okay, um, so you're saying that, that uh, uh, as a facilitator, uh, to get into the simulation state has its uh, own perils also because in terms of what that person will experience because I don't know, if I don't know how to handle it then it could be a tricky situation we are letting ourselves in and uh, yeah, I, I think I, I, I get what you're saying and I also agree that many a times uh, I am also aware of it and therefore I don't create or co-create uh, an experience which uh, sometimes I'm not sure that if the responses are too extreme, then how will I, if, you know, how will I tackle it? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's... That's something I, 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 I guess is what maybe you are saying. Yes, Darwin. And we need to take into consideration that we are a learning organization. It means that we are trying to learn through uh, this kind of experiences and interventions. And that doesn't mean that this is the last version of what we are doing, you know, all the time we uh, develop you know the methodology take into our consideration the feedback of the people and how we can make things much better. Uh, and really, uh, simulation games uh, as, uh, as a field that has its own challenges and uh, barriers, but at the same time, you know, doing uh, simulation games in this way could help people to stick to their humanity because now the uh, tech and high tech sector are trying, you know, to take the, the, the concept and approach to different levels that we do believe at, uh, at Creativity Lab that, uh, that harms uh, the, the, the psychosocial well-being of people. For, uh, we keep doing some things in a simple way uh, through the presence of specialists and uh, under the umbrella of uh, learning all the times from our mistakes and making things much better in the future. Thanks a lot. I think I'll connect with you. Uh, um post on the uh, unconference and we'll take the conversation forward uh, from your learning. So thanks Thank a lot, Isa, much. for the explanation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Alison, we need to end up the session now. Thank you very much for your support. And really, I'm so sorry for, uh, but you know that at the end of the day, it's done because the number of people were not uh, enough. Uh, thank you very much for your effort. I mean, uh, the people who uh, were all the time uh, on the stage in order to support us 